Hi, everyone. This is uh, Adrian from Audio Excellence. That's Philip. Our friend uh, Lewis is going to join us in a couple of minutes. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the new Macintosh 1502 power amplifier. Um, we did a video of the unboxing, I guess, about a week ago. It's um, So imagine, well, let me back up. Um, so a year ago, approximately, or two years ago, Macintosh was celebrating their 70th anniversary, and they came out with an amplifier uh, called the 2105, right? 2102. 2102, yeah. sorry. And um, uh, that was a limited edition, limited run product. And after uh, the factory discontinued it, they decided since the amp is so good, they didn't want to take it off the market. So they uh, renamed it and re um, they changed the aesthetics to so that it looks more like if you can picture the, well, anyway, Jerry will include the picture of it. It's like an MC275. Like yeah, just on steroids. So it's, 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 uh, it's called it. Uh, 1502, so 150 watts, two channels into either two, four, eight ohms. It's uh, priced at $15,000, eight KT88s, four 12 AX7As, and four 12 AT7s. That's, that's Canadian dollars, by the way. 15, no, it's US. No. Yeah, it's US. No. Yeah, it's US. 15 US. Um, there's a uh, sentry monitor technology, and this is important because a lot of tube amplifiers, when, when something goes wrong, either the tube goes or something inside, there's, there's no additional protection. With this particular amplifier, uh, Macintosh's uh, sentry monitor system is constantly monitoring the uh, output current. And if something is not right, it shuts the amp down. And it's 118 pounds, so it's really, Big and 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 heavy. Um, anyway, um, Philip, you wanna come on in? Lewis, join us. Yeah, just have a seat and clip on your mic. Everybody, this is Lewis, a friend and a client of ours. Uh, he actually was featured in the um, C22 Mark V uh, tube preamplifier. So uh, check it out. Uh, Lewis has been a lifelong audiophile and music lover, and uh, we thought we'd uh, ask him to join us with the C22. He didn't get a chance to listen to this amplifier, so he'll just sit and make fun of Philip while uh, Philip is giving Yeah, his... he'll, he'll, he'll try. <laughs> well, the, the two of them um, um, are, when when uh, Lewis comes to visit, uh, they're, they're, they're always talking and having a great time. So there's, yeah. there's a story here, obviously, and it's really quick. Uh, I was just started at the store and I couldn't sell squat. <laughs> For weeks, it was like, man, I should be doing something to earn my pay here. And then Lewis had come in a couple of times and we got to talk. And then I think he felt sorry for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> Just say it is. <laughs> and, and he bought a pair of uh, Legacy Audio uh, Classic um, HD, which are the small monitors. And that was my first sale here. So hmm. I'll always be grateful to Lewis. But, you know, it wouldn't stop me from picking on him. Yep. That's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> so anyway, what you were saying? Uh, so I'm grateful to my good friend here, and I'm happy and glad that he is with us today. And um, so just for those of you out there, I mean, we are friends here, uh, you know, all three of us, really. And um, um, we, we jest. Well, we so jest. Lewis, one day we were just talking about food and says, I'm gonna bring you real jerk chicken. I said and no. No, he did. And that's the no, thing. no. So, so out of nowhere, one day he shows up with the most delicious jerk chicken. Just for reference, about five minutes from here, there's a place that serves um, well-known, uh, very popular Jamaican food, and they've got uh, aki rice and jerk chicken and cow tongue and all the stuff that you shouldn't be eating, but we have it. They have beef patties, everything, and it's fresh and it's well known, right? You guys yeah. are well known. Um, so then Lewis brings his own jerk chicken, and it's like a big Tupperware container. I said, "Okay, well, let's and share." Jerk, jerk I had, pork. I, I had, I think, two pieces. I put in the kitchen. I said to the guys, "Help yourselves." I come back an hour later; it's all gone. I'm thinking, <laughs> "What the hell?" I had like two pieces. The guys never left me any, so it gives you an idea of how good the food. It was all Jay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't J. It was Shin. It was all Shin. <laughs> it was all Shin. Yeah. Anyway, what do you think of the um, 1502? Uh, I liked it immediately. As soon as I, well, I didn't like it immediately because it's really awkwardly shaped. As far as I'm concerned, when you're carrying it, it's very heavy, and all the weights on one side. But if you're carrying it lengthwise, it tilts. 
to one side. If you're carrying it sideways, one person has to carry basically a hundred pounds. The other person carries almost nothing. So it is very difficult to move and to do it by yourself is not an easy task. So th that part, I immediately said, well, you know, that's a bit not that, that great. It looks like an MC275. And to me, it sounds like, um, you know, we did a, a, a an appraisal of the, of the 275. And I especially liked it bridge because I heard it at a client's that way. Driving a pair of the vets, it was sounding fabulous, right? Um, and that's what this amp sounds like, but even more refined, even more dynamic, um, even punchier and just really well focused, uh, just from the get go. Um, that it's, it's a really, really, really good amplifier. Um, quite unlike the, previous model which has a more romantic kind of sound um more conventional layout and we've had clients buy that for that specific reason um, anybody who wants to play you know popular music uh any rock music i uh, will love the 1502 it's 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 very punchy it's very put, well put together sonically um it just has this kind of uh you know, I like to use your word now. It has a kind of gravitas. It has a, there's a, there's a weight and, um, there's an intense feeling about the amplifier right from the get go from almost any, you know, at any, any, um, you know, sound level, whether it's quiet or, you know, middling along for background or even, and, and when, of course, when you, when you, when you, when you amplify and push it to loud levels, it's really, it's really, yeah, it's really odd. I, I, Almost word for word, agree with you. The interesting thing is, in theory, the circuit is identical to the uh, the, the previous one. The, well, I, I I'm terrible with numbers. Twenty 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 one oh five. The one that I it thought replaces twenty one oh two, but twenty one oh two. The one the one that it replaces the seventieth anniversary. I'm so sorry. I'm just very bad with numbers. Um, the the so you'd think that the sound would be similar, and I. I think I agree with Philip. The the previous one is definitely more romantic, um, at least what I remember of it. Um, it's a really good app. It's it's uh, almost immediately. Uh, uh, I started playing music this morning um, from very early, about three o'clock this morning, and I didn't stop uh, until just before uh, Jerry came. So about nine ish. So for about a good four or five hours, I was just grooving. Um, great app. It, it, I think short of the, um, short of the 901s, this is my new favorite amplifier oh, from Macintosh. Uh, one third the price wow. or yeah. half the price or whatever, yeah. right? So it's incredible. It's, 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 it is really, really incredible right out of the box. And I didn't really notice it changing much after even we put, you know, a, probably a hundred hours on it. Yeah. Um, so Macintosh has really done their job well. Anybody who complains about, oh, you know, I don't want something that's so relaxed and yeah. like it's definitely not. No, it's not. It's super powerful, very authoritative. If you didn't know any better, you'd think it's a solid state amp. But and then you listen, you realize no, it's not. It's got tubes. No, it's, it's just that it's really so, authoritative. So here's the other part of it. Uh I had it hooked up playing to the Seraphinos, and it was really, really good. And then you brought in all that other stuff, yeah. and I had to test the Sonic Frontier stuff. And First, I hooked up the line three to it, and that's a, a line stage that Sonic Frontiers used to make, two box line stage, and it re and it's a very neutral sounding preamp. So of course, uh, I put it in the system, and and yet all the all those characters characteristics I love so much about the fifteen oh two were all still present. So the preamp did not add anything; it, you were just listening to the amplifier. So I know very much so that uh, that amp sounds the way that we've just described it. And then when I put the Sonic Frontiers Power 3 monoblocks to, to test those out and I took out the 1502, the Sonic Frontiers it, by, by, by comparison sounded very old school and 2B and warm. And so that to me was a shock because Sonic Frontiers, generally speaking, is a fairly neutral sounding, you know, non-invasive type of, um, uh, tube equipment, um, you know, very f much uh, liked and favored by, you know, audiophiles like ourselves who who like a kind of more, um, um, you know, laid back approach to to stuff, right? Um, so 
you know, interesting that the Macintosh actually bested the Sonic Frontier. Oh, by far. Yeah. By far. This, this is huge, um, huge favorite. I mean, I'm so highly impressed by this amplifier. I, I, in many respects, I wish that this was so much more affordable so that more audiophiles could afford to buy it. It's so good. It really is that good. And the thing is, um, so when I when I played the system, there was no preamp in the system. So I thought, well, that's fine. I'll just hook up the CD player directly to the amp and use the variable control on the CD player, the Macintosh MCD 600. And in a way, it's a good thing because then this way there's no preamp in the signal path. So all I'm really hearing is just the signal directly. And um, uh, I I play all kinds of music from our regular playlist of audiophile quality classics. Uh, which we've mentioned many, many times, um, to stuff that I grew up listening. You know, uh, um, in fact, if you go to the Macintosh room, as we call it, the Macintosh room right now, uh, the playlist that's playing is 70s soul. Mm. And it's, it's all the songs that I, I put together, uh, to, to celebrate my oldest brother's uh, life when he passed away. Um, and, and it's, it's all, the great Motown stuff, and all the great Lewis Philadelphia, like uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, stuff. I, 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 I have a lot of those songs. Yeah. yeah. I used to actually play in a discotheque in Jamaica, uh, when in high school. What do you mean you used to play? You mean like as a discotheque? Yeah. So you know we I mean? twin turntables and oh, then we go it and yeah, you we, DJ? I used to DJ. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 But anyway, it was, um, it was a lot of fun listening to, all sorts of music, and uh, I'll give you an example. So after I played our regular roster of audiophile stuff, just to make sure that what I was hearing was in fact that good, I, I then decided to play um, Streets of London. And uh, it's, it's just a song about various people in the streets of London and what they're doing and so on. This, this uh, singer is, is um, observing. And, you know, just a nice, beautiful melody. Then I decided to play um, I don't know why, just Don McLean's Vincent. His, mm. the, the song was stuck in my mind for the last few days and I was thinking, okay, one of these days I'm going to come to the store and listen to it. I didn't get a chance to. So I thought this morning I'll play it. Now, I remember, recording's not all that great, but it's a beautiful piece of music. I play this and within seconds, I forget that it's not a great recording. It's not a bad recording. But within seconds, the words are flowing and 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 how beautiful the song is, the lyrics about uh, um, a tribute to Vincent van Gogh. Um, then I decided to play um, Jason, my, my client and friends, uh, one of his favorite pieces of music, homemade ice cream, very toe-tapping, um, uh, just very engaging, contagious. And I remember I stopped playing that piece of music because when I go to Jason's house and listen to it, it's so amazing. And I come back to the store and it sounds nowhere near as good and I just don't want to listen to it. Well, I listened to it this morning and it was really engaging, very, very, very uh, contagious. And I was so happy listening to it. Uh, Depeche Mode, Welcome to My World. Mm -hmm. And this thing is punching and it's hitting me in my face and my chest. I'm thinking, wow, this is... Unbelievable. I'm going from one end of the musical spectrum to another. Um, then I decided to play Vincent Belanger's um, The Swan. Um, and again, just tone it all the way down. And it's this beautiful romantic cello piece. Um, just absolutely gorgeous. Um, and then again, the extreme opposite, Hugh Masekela's Stamella, right? Oh. And I cranked this thing up. And it's, it's his poetry about African mine workers and the kind of life they lead. Um, and, and just listening to it and, and you hear the words and they're so clear and so heartfelt. And that amplifier, I don't know what it is, but it just really just grabs you by the heart and just, you know, say, this is what the words mean. And usually I'm, I'm the person that actually listens more to the song than to the words. But for some reason, it really made me pay attention to the words. Vinod, are you going to say something? So, no, I know Lewis didn't listen to the sample, but he certainly listened to the equipment in here yeah. um, to do the, his assessment of the C22. And one of the other things that you said to me was, um, 
you were playing some of your music and you hadn't heard it on the system with this kind of resolution and capability. Uh, yeah. And you're saying that it was kind of like um, uh, disappointing because your music didn't scale the right way to allow the equipment to be the what it was. And so I think it's interesting that on the 1502, I could definitely tell what's well recorded, what's not well recorded. And it didn't really seem to matter. I didn't, no. I didn't mind. No. As audiophiles, we tend to gravitate towards things that sound good intrinsically. Not that it's great music, but just have impressive sonics. So it's easy to tell what it, where everything is going, how, what's happening and so forth. But certainly this amplifier allows you to connect emotionally, spiritually, oh, all that time. in, in a way that, uh, 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 is beyond just the mere, uh, technicalities of the recording. Yeah. No, I, I, told, like I say, I, I, for some reason, when I listen to music, most of the time, I pay more attention to the actual melody than to the lyrics. So, uh, uh um, Philip's favorite tearjerker song, oh, uh, yeah. uh, um, Gregory Porter, Gregory Porter, right? I, I've known the song forever and I still don't know what the words mean because I've never listened to the words. Hey, Laura. Uh, it's very sad, right? I, I just never listen. That's the song. I, I mean, hey, I listen, Laura? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, to, a, it's amazing song, right? So I listen to the I listen to the melody, and the words have never sunk in because I've never paid attention, uh, and I still haven't listened to this uh, uh, song through that amplifier. So I'm going to try and see whether or not, in fact, uh, what I postulate is, is is true. But every cut that I've played through the 1502 system. And again, running through the uh, Sonus Fabus Serafinos, um, just grabbed my attention and said, listen to the words and not just the music. So again, I decided, let me listen to. So last two or three months, uh, I think because um, our friend Derek passed away, um, he's not far from my thoughts on a daily basis. And, and so maybe I'm listening to a lot more of those you know, father, son, because in many, many ways, he was like a mentor and a father figure to all of us. Um, so I've so been listening Harry to Chapin. Harry Chapin, uh, um, Cats in the Cradle, right? Um, Dan Fogelberg, uh, leader of the band. And again, I, I, I sort of knew the words, but I never really paid attention. So I put these on and then suddenly I'm weeping and going, oh my God, that's what this all means. I never paid attention before. Yeah, Jerry, a little homework for you. So these 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 uh, titles that uh, Adrian's mentioning, should it, when you get a chance, just have a quick listen, see if that kind of like uh, you know moves, moves you, in, yeah, in any way, yeah. So Especially this, you know, know, so this will help you understand where we're, we, yeah. you know, where. Especially guys with their fathers, right? Because yeah. there's always that alpha tension. But um, you know, Dan Fogelberg's leader of the band. When I listen to this song, it's like, oh my god, you know, in so many ways. Uh, um, especially the last verse, uh, you know, Derek meant that much to me. Um, John Denver's My Sweet Lady. Again, after I listened to this, I decided, you know, John Denver's of sort of the same era. Let me put on John Denver. I haven't heard in a long time. And the last time I heard John Denver through an audio file system, I hated the song. It's it was cringy. Terrible, it's cringy yeah. terrible recording. So for such a really popular singer who was so famous and so, um, uh, you know, it, the recordings are just terrible. Anyway, I decided to put it on. You know, I, I wanted to hear it. And suddenly, the recording quality didn't seem to matter. The words were poignant, the way he played the guitar. And I remember his voice. He had this angelic, beautiful voice. So pure, so so well, you know, so well done. And I, I, just to say, um, I really wish the, the 1502 was available at a much more affordable price. Go ahead. Um, I, coming back to uh, John Denver, back in the late 70s, um, Neil Diamond, uh, John Denver, um, Bobby Goldsboro. Oh, I still, play, I still, I still play Bobby Goldsboro. Yes. Bobby Vinton, I still yes. play. But um, even Glenn Campbell. Yes. Those were stalwarts in Jamaica, and Jamaicans don't typically play a lot of white musicians. And this is my observation growing up. And I'm telling you, they killed it. Yeah. They killed it. Um, I went to Jamaica. I was never a fan of Kenny Rogers. Yeah. I go to oh, Jamaica. I, I go to Jamaica. 
And you became a gambler? <laughs> no, no, no. No, I would never gamble. Um, and I'm sitting on my veranda at my family home, and the neighbor is blasting Kenny Rogers. And I'm going, this damn sounds great. <laughs> so anyways, I come back and I put Kenny Rogers on my, um, on my uh, playlist. And, you know, I'm telling, I'm telling my niece, I says, boy, I tell you, I, 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 and the neighbor, which they knew, I don't know the neighbor. I said, um, yeah, the neighbor was playing this Kenny Rogers. She says, oh, when Kenny Rogers played at um, Sunsplash in Jamaica, everybody there was singing word for word to the song when he was singing. I'm going, Kenny Rogers played in Jamaica? She says, yeah. I'm going, wow. <laughs> <say>, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, um, gr we, we, we say that among certain groups, but um, in Jamaica, when my father was alive, if you spoke like that, you yeah. would get a slap across <laughs> your head. You know, that, that uh, he, he was very strict. Proper Straight. English. Yeah, you had to speak proper English. Well, Derek was the same as well. He was always very proud of his British English. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily proud of any way, but I think communication is, 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 is the key. I mean, I've never had somebody say, I don't understand what you're saying. I mean, and I can understand it, it, when people say they can't understand the Jamaican <laughs> talk. But it depends on your schooling, what family life you were sure. brought up into, you know. But anyways, that's... But yeah, coming back to the um, those songs, yeah. I'm telling you, John Denver was huge in Jamaica. So before you huge. leave the store today, uh, make sure uh, the guys play you the 1502 and, and play those songs. Yeah. I, I heard the... Um, well, I heard um, Earth, Wind & Fire playing... When I came, so yeah, that's my playlist. I got all kinds of stuff on. I I I'm a big fan of um of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Um, as a matter of fact, I said to my son, my youngest son, I said, you know, I think Earth, Wind, and Fire is probably the best band I know about. Um, he goes, mm, uh, maybe so for you, but <laughs> the majority would say the Beatles. And you know what? I think he's right. Oh, the Beatles, I think so. But in terms not of necessarily like, all the songs I like from the Beatles, wind, but what I grew yeah, up on, yeah. they were they were fantastic yeah, songwriting, yeah. and you know, um, to me, they and I have to agree with him. But it's not necessarily I like the Beatles over Earth, Wind, and Fire. But I do enjoy listening to certain songs, po popular songs from the Beatles. Yeah. You know, that's that's me. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, out of all the things that we've um, reviewed in the last while, right, this thing has really um, stuck out. And I'm very curious now because uh, the 1502 was connected to the Serafinos. 1502 has a bit of a warmth and a lot of punch and a lot of dynamics and, and still capable of being very subtle. Um, the Serafinos are already pretty warm. I'm very curious now to see what they would sound like, the, the 1502 with the Wilsons. Because when I came in to listen to the uh, C22, the the openness and clarity was immediately obvious. The the Wilsons are definitely uh, they've got this openness and and and, oh, and clarity huge. and the ability to distinguish between all the notes and so on, yet still maintain a level of musicality that's so hard to do when the speakers are capable of such transparency. I'm really curious now to see what the 1502s will sound like once we hook up the uh, the Wilsons to them. All I can say is that. Uh, without any reservation, this is one hell of an app. One hell of an app. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I, 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 it's, 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 it's definitely, I would put this as a fantastic pre. Oh, you're talking about the pre. I was yeah. talking about the app. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. know. Yeah. No, no, but you should definitely hear it yeah. before, before yeah, you we'll go. I will play it for you. Yeah. 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 You Let's were see. playing some of it yesterday, but I didn't. No, no, really. we played, um, yesterday was the power three. So. Oh. But here and see what you think. I think you'll be really quite amazed. I, I truly am amazed by how good it is. Yeah. So it'll be interesting actually again, because uh, I had the old amp hooked up at one point and Scott, our Macintosh, uh, you know, liaison, he, he made me change it. He made me put the 462 on because he said, you know, I really like the transistor, the transistor version better. I didn't like, you know, he didn't like the, the tube. I said, okay, I found it kind of strange, but 
So next time he comes in here, we'll play that for him and then I'll see what his reaction is. I'm sure it's going to be really good. Fantastic. I, I, I mean, seriously, it's, it's, it's easy to sort of criticize, you know, you guys are, you guys are Macintosh dealers and so on. And the fact is that the guys have made their opinions known about how they prefer certain Hegels over Macintoshes and so on, or even different models of Macintosh within the line. Uh, I think this one's a clear, really a clear winner. I, mm -hmm. I talk about Desert Island. I would take this to Desert Island. So the other thing about it, obviously, is that we like Hegel because one of the reasons is it spotlights everything. It's got a very dark background. It's it actually considered kind of dark sounding, right? Mm -hmm. it's slightly open the top end. The Macintosh is just joyful. Oh, yes. It's that's just great joyful. Word. Yeah, that's a great word. Mm. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Um, you know, a lot of people have been critical recently about Macintosh, but I think they have really stepped up the game. The first Macintosh I saw in my lifetime was a big monster tube, which a Chinese Jamaican guy had. Um, a disco they also he also had a record store and a, a recording studio in in kingston and his name was herman chinlai and i didn't know that he even had a disco we used to just go and buy records from him and one night i went out and there he was playing out at this um party and he had this humongous tube macintosh and the bass from the Macintosh was so fantastic. It wasn't fast because we never knew about fast bass or slow bass. It was just bass and it was just hitting you in the chest. <laughs> and of course, in those days, you know, everybody wow. was using a 15 or 15, couple 15s or couple 18 inch speakers. So it was just hitting you in the chest. So we never knew about fast bass or slow bass. We well, just- It reminds me of a really funny story. When I first came to Canada, um, my family and I, we would go once a month to Kensington Market. So it's, it's in the, uh, uh, just slightly behind Chinatown in Toronto. And Kensington Market is, is a very interesting place. You have, um, Europeans, you have, um, uh, uh, Jamaicans, you have some Italians, and it's just a big open market along the streets. And then, uh, to the sides, you have all these different stores selling anything from clothing to, uh, uh, anyway, anything you can really think of. And right at the end of the street uh, uh, juncture, there was this um, store selling um, Jamaican food and uh, clothing and so on. And invariably, they would have the speaker outside on the <laughs> sidewalk playing music and typically Bob Marley or something along those lines because it's, you know, quote unquote Jamaican. So, you you know, it's associated with that. So I, we would walk by and I would always think, Boy, these speakers suck because all of this is just bass. There's nothing else. And then one day I took a close look. There's no mid range. There's no high frequencies. The drivers were blown out. So they took the drivers out and it was just holes in the speaker, but they had the woofer and the woofer was still pounding away. So you heard this boom, 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 boom. Yeah. No definition. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, yeah. no, but it, it, and that's, I, that's still the same way. There's yeah. nothing has changed in Jamaica. I mean, yeah. but there's, um, people with very high end systems yeah. in Jamaica, right? Yeah. But, um, no, I, guess. Great. I, I missed that. Yeah. Uh, Oh, yeah. I mean, I think if you drive on Eglinton today... Um, Eglinton's another place yeah, I mean, in Toronto where yeah, there's a lot of... Yeah. If you don't get shot. Culture. Oh, oh, it's not that big. Don't the give best people the wrong beef impression. patties there. Best. <laughs> he can say that he's from Jamaica. We can't say that. <laughs> anyway, I think this has gone far off. Gone yeah, we've gone off the rails a lot. Yeah. No, no, if you like this video, even if you don't, subscribe, uh, thumbs up, uh, like us. Uh, again, the money that we raise goes to charity. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them down below. We'll try not to answer them this time because the video has gone way off rails. Uh, I'm Adrian from Audio Excellence in Canada and Philip and Lewis. Uh, thank you very much, Lewis. Appreciate you joining us. We'll see you again next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.